This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Let's welcome in Tom Murphy here on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Hall Hawk Sports. Tom, let's start there, man. I mean, you were there. You were you were getting a chance to to cover, and like Tommy said, you were in attendance. What do you remember about that game? Uh, good morning, guys. Always a pleasure to be with you. Um, I welled up in tears a couple of times last night. I, I was Alex Collins was that um, engaging and and you know love inducing as as a person that I felt close to him. Um, yeah, I was standing on the sideline and I saw Brandon Allen throw that pass over there to the right, and I was thinking, oh well, that's way short. And I didn't see there was people between me and the ball, and it was just utter chaos. I was standing on the 13-yard line out of bounds, and if you look at the replay, when he's tackled on that sideline, I was, I don't know, like six or seven feet away from uh, Collins. And, of course, he thought he had to score a touchdown, so he laddled it back. I mean, there were so many bizarre things about that play. You know, Dominic Green fell on the ball, but, you know, Dan Skipper tipped it. And um, mm -hmm. without that, I mean, who knows where the ball goes. Um, but he scooped it up, you know, um, Drew Morgan and Jeremy Sprinkle have just utterly, you know, critical blocks over there on the edge for him. And he, and he also jukes a guy to get the first down distance. Um, I have so many memories of Alex Collins, his 212-yard game at Texas Tech, which was basically the arrival of the, the Brett Bielema regime at, at Arkansas uh, in tandem with uh, Jonathan Williams when they ran for seven rushing touchdowns that day. And I think he had like an 84-yarder to just really seal it in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. But the, fifth, the, the 2015 season when Jonathan Williams was injured, when he rushed for um, the here's – a, here's a weird thing. In, in my day-to-day -day life as a reporter, and when you're in camp, you're doing all these historic notes and things like that. And so I've been writing for weeks about Rocket Sanders' 1,443 yards last year, and it was fourth all-time right behind Alex Collins. Um, I'm an avid crossword puzzle solver, and in Sunday's crossword, there was a clue that had the, the term Buddha in it, <laughs> oh, how about which that? was his nickname. And um, and I'm, I'm writing another note about all these guys with nicknames on the current team, you know, between uh, Pooh Paul and Rocket Sanders and Nudie McLaughlin, and he went by Buddha. Not, not as yeah. commonly, commonly as these guys, but so Alex Collins' name pops up in my day-to-day Often and every time I think of him, I think of his smile and his energy and just the togetherness he fostered. Tommy, you, you initially mentioned the, the personality. That was really where you started with. What made him unique in the conversations that you guys shared on reporting on him? Um, just, his, just his open smile. I mean, he loved football, but it, it, you could just tell his passion for life was an even greater component to, to what he did than football. So many football guys you see, they're really devoted to football. And you can, you can tell. And Alex Collins loved football, but he loved life more. And that's, that's kind of my biggest takeaway. And everyone around him since that. When you saw all the tributes last night, I just read Robert Griffin III's a minute ago about an evening in Baltimore where everyone that was around them at this club loved Alex. And that's just I did a story on him for our Hog Future series in 2013, and I feel so blessed and fortunate to have written that one. But I described him of like the Pied Piper of, of people. People just, they, they heard Alex Collins' music, and they wanted to follow him. And, um, you know, I, I would come home and tell my, sis, my daughters, Alex Collins is taking these Irish dancing lessons, and <laughs> we'd watch the videos of this. And it just it's just a pleasure. I mean, just an open-hearted kid who made everyone around him feel better yeah infectious personality i think would be the way to sum it up yes i mean, I mean no doubt that's and you look at jonathan williams you look at all the people who tweeted last night and no it's, it's the same storyline infectious personality yeah you know one of the uh one of the coincidences i guess it is is dan enos and sam Pittman were on those staffs um, when Alex played, now they're they're back here again. It'll be Thursday before we talk to Danny. You know, Sam Pittman put out a statement. I don't know if 
he'll impromptu speak to you guys a little bit later on this morning. But uh, uh, these were, you know, you got two guys on staff now, a head coach and a coordinator that, you know, that coached uh, teams with Alex Collins on them. Exactly right. And you know that when, you know, those guys are studying film and doing what they do, and when you're in the camp grind, man, it's uh, you can't lose your focus. But I guarantee you, last night they spent a moment to reflect on Alex Collins and what he meant to them. And uh, um, I'm sure we're going to ask Danny knows about Alex um, on his day. But, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't for a guy named Darren McFadden, I, people, I think, would say Alex Collins might have been, you know, the greatest running back in Arkansas history. And, and he did it, you know, kind of in tandem with Williams or, or you know, or he could have had uh, a lot more rushing yards. Yeah. I was just, we were commenting earlier, maybe this is something that, as, as you write more about Alex, I'm sure, in the coming days and talk to the current players, you know, these guys are of the age that are on this year's team that would have been watching it 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, depending on where they're at in their career. I mean, Alex was would have been right in that, that place in time at Arkansas that he would have inspired some of these guys that are there now to be Razorbacks or maybe made them watch football a, a bit more, you know, that's how recent his career was, but also how connected he possibly is to some guys on this team. Absolutely, Tommy. And I, I read so much last night. That I know that I did see one tweet saying, hey, I, watching this guy was one of the reasons why, you know, I wanted to come to Arkansas. I, and I can't remember who wrote it, but um, that's that that's true. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm really going to miss him. Uh, and to be honest, you know, with, with Ryan Mallett, with Chris Smith, uh, you know, uh, Brian Wallace um, and Alex Collins. I mean, it's it's just been a series of blows for Arkansas football in terms of, of cherished players who, who pass well before their time. Well, and, and two very close misses with Quincy McAdoo and Peyton Hillis. I mean, that could have, that story could have easily went the wrong direction, both in both of those occasions. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I, I hope Arkansas does some kind of, um, you know, tribute or whatever. Um, I can't remember what game it was, but Alex Collins has been back and called the Hogs, you know, when they honor mm-hmm. these, these guys at midfield. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I don't know. He, he, I've done this for 15 years now, and Alex would have to be just in my top five and maybe maybe my favorite Razorback that I've covered. That was in November of 2021. I remember, I can't remember the game, but I do remember kind of the point that was around. Well, the, you mentioned the tribute aspect. What should the U of A do? Should they do something first game with some of the guys that you've mentioned that we've unfortunately lost the last few months? You know, I, I really don't know. I haven't given much thought to what they should do other than the fact that you know that they're talking about it. And I, I mean, You've got pictures of Ryan Mallett. I think Julian Horton, the former Razorback receiver, last night posted a picture of Mallett and Alex Collins on the yeah. sideline in, in Ravens uniforms. I mean, that, these are, we're, we're talking about, you know, premier Razorbacks here, drafted Razorbacks, and it's just really, really sad. Yeah. Tom, let's shift gears and talk about camp. Uh, you know, th- these subjects are never fun. Unfortunately, we've had them too often recently but camp is still ongoing as you said the coaches have to maintain their focus and watching all the film that's one thing we heard from sam Pittman when he addressed the media saturday i guess let's start there with saturday in the scrimmage what were some of your takeaways we've read them in the in the uh in the democrat gazette and on whole hog sports as you've written but uh as you've had more time to reflect on what unfolded saturday in the scrimmage uh, what are your thoughts well, obviously, we're just taking what um, we, we hear from Sam Pittman and the statistics we were given. Right. Uh, but but feeling, it felt like in the move-the-ball sequences, the defense really dominated. Um, and uh, then when they got into some of the uh, situational in the red zone, then, then they did get some touchdowns. Uh, you know, we saw the clip of Dominic Johnson's 50-yarder, broke up the middle, uh, you know, broke a kind of an ankle tackle and scored. Good job by Dominic. Great to see him back in action uh, and feeling good. But um, I think Travis Williams and the energy the new defensive staff has brought, they're building confidence that, yeah, we can put pressure on passers. We can make them hurry their throws and all that. And so in response, this team that's got to replace both tackles and has one of them, Devin Manuel, out for a while, these offensive linemen are saying, man, we are just going to have to, you know, improve. I mean, we've got to – 
respond and, and be better. Uh, and and I, I think we've seen this basically pattern in some other camps where the defense starts out really strong and then the offense, you know, comes along. Um, and one thing we can never, you know, calculate into the equation is that on game day, K.J. Jefferson can get out of a rush, uh, can make guys miss as he did at BYU and Kansas and other games and make things out of nothing. So that's always a component you're not aware of in these scrimmages when they can't be tackled. Tom, we were giving our hot takes yesterday about Arkansas football on Hot Take Monday. I think that this Arkansas pass rush is going to even get more sacks than they did last year when they were tied for six in the country. What would you say is your hot take that you actually believe about this team in 2023? Uh, how about that they are going to be um, in position to challenge to win every game against every SEC West team? I, you know, so that means on the road at Alabama. That would be a super hot yeah. take. I mean, I don't know. I just think that they have a chance to be really good. And um, – I don't know if I would say they'd get more sacks because Drew Sanders was just a, um, a, you know, a freakish pass rush specialist, and they they also lost Jordan Dominic. Mm-hmm. So to say they could get close to forty two, that is a hot take. Yeah, that's like, I'm that's gonna have to take smoldering. It's like seventeen right yeah. there. I think Jordan had seven and a half, and Drew had nine and a half. Well, yeah. Well, so I'm going to take the under. I'm going to take yep. the under on that 42 side. Yep. Fair enough. Tom, 18 days away. Western Carolina comes into Little Rock, according to the Beth Saracen app. Arkansas is still a 34 and a half point favorite. We'll uh, we'll pick up the conversation, and I don't guess we'll we won't have talked to Dan Enos, but we'll be on the doorstep of that when we visit next on Thursday morning. Sounds good, guys. And you know what? I do appreciate the time to relate some Alex Collins stuff because I this that that hit me last night, and, and it. You know, to talk about it, you know, it's. I think you honor him when you when you talk about his legacy that way. So thank. And we could hear the connection, Tom, that uh, that you had with him uh, in your emotions this morning. We appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll chat in a couple of days, buddy. Sounds good. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.